Your powers combined. I am Captain Planet! 15 forgotten Hanna-Barbera superhero shows that were way ahead of their time explored. If you grew up watching cartoons, there's almost a 100% possibility that you came across Hanna-Barbera cartoon and didn't even realize it at the time. Tor raises the club, and he becomes Mitor, and Tog is transferred into a fire-breathing dragon. Cartoons have played a huge role in shaping up the growing minds of children, especially the ones with superheroes who save the Earth, Cosmos, or even the people of their small town. Many Hanna-Barbera cartoons were built on this foundation alone. Joseph Barbara and William Hanna both worked at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer at the same time during the Great Depression, and it wasn't long until the co-workers became friends and went on to produce 114 Tom and Jerry shorts over 17 years. Finally, in 1957, with a coin toss won by Hanna, Hanna-Barbera Productions was born. These, then, are my first planeteers. The world's greatest hope. After that, they were on a roll of producing cartoons with plenty of science fiction themes that had some unforgettable superheroes and there was no stopping them. However, decades passed and other cartoons overshadowed these iconic productions of the 60s and 70s, which were way ahead of their time. Could very well be the bubbler. The impossible's are ready to do the impossible, Chief. Often considered a fierce competitor of Disney, in this video we will explore the mightiest superhero shows produced by Hanna-Barbera. Let's begin, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What? Mighty Midor. The show is about a teenage caveman named Tor, voiced by Bobby Diamond, and his winged pet dinosaur Tog, voiced by John Stephenson. One day, they rescue an old man, and for that, the old man gives him a reward that changes his life. He gives him a magical club, which transforms Tor into the masked and muscular Mitor, who now possesses superhuman strength and the power of flight. Furthermore, he can now generate energy blasts from his magical club. The club doesn't just affect Tor, but also his pet dinosaur Tog, as it gives him the ability to spit fire. Now, the mighty Mitor takes it upon himself to save the villagers from evil with his newfound powers, which includes prehistoric enemies. Now to finish these giant insects. This science fiction animated series was created by Alex Toth for Hanna-Barbera Productions and was televised for a total of two years, from 1967 to 1969. After that, Mighty Midor appeared in reruns on Cartoon Network from 1992 to 2000, after which it aired on Cartoon Network's sister channel called Boomerang. There was a total of 36 episodes, ranging from The Monster Keeper to Rock and the Golden Rock. The titular characters made cameos in other shows including Space Ghost, Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, and Scooby-Doo. Although Mighty Midor wasn't on television for too long, it did create a lasting impact. You would be surprised to know just how many people were invested in a caveman and his pet dinosaur. A fight. You take the rider, Tug. People often compare this show to the Flintstones, however, Mighty Miter was way more action-packed and, of course, had the superhero element to it, making it all the more entertaining. The animation used for the show was also exceptional for its time, and if there were a Mighty Miter live-action film or show to be made today, it would give great competition to the likes of Captain America or Batman. Number 2. The Herculoids This Sunday morning cartoon was written and designed by Alex Toth and produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions and made its debut on CBS in the year 1967. However, only one season was produced with just under 20 episodes. There were reruns until the year 1969, which is when the show officially ended. Space live the Herculoids. However, in the year 1981, 11 more episodes were produced as part of the Space Stars show, which is a 60-minute Saturday morning program block broadcasted on NBC. The show consists of 8 regular characters, which are made of 3 humans and 5 creatures. Xander is the leader of the Herculoids, along with his wife Tara and their son Dorna, who takes center stage in the Herculoids. The creatures include Zok, Igu, Tundro, Gloop, and Gleep. The series revolves around the planet Amzot, the space family and their pets, who fight together, intending to save their planet from mutants, robots, and mad scientists. Now we have the son of the great Xandor, 
We will keep him for a slave after you have been put into the river of the- Throughout the season, they fought several enemies, which included destroyer ants, raider apes, faceless people, and many more. The Herculoids and their characters were mentioned in other shows like Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Sea Lab 2021, Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law, and others. This is the age of revival. Many shows from the past are being brought to our TV screens again, and The Herculoids is one of the shows that people wish to see again. With brilliant art and exceptional voice acting, the show garnered fans from all across, despite only airing for one season to begin with. Although the plot can seem repetitive, much like other cartoons of that era, the Herculoids made sure that viewers got to experience a new villain in every segment, always keeping them entertained and fulfilled its purpose of being a science fiction cartoon. Number 3. Johnny Quest Johnny Quest was the first Hanna-Barbera action-adventure show. Based on the radio serial Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy, Johnny Quest was created by Doug Wildey and aired for 26 episodes from September 1964 to March 1965. Johnny and his father, Dr. Brenton C. Quest, lived in the Florida Keys, but they travel around the world investigating various scientific mysteries. On their adventures, they encounter several rivals, including everything from robot spies to ancient Egyptian mummies. Rounding out the Quest team are Bandit, Haji, and Race. Bandit is Johnny's pet dog who often assists on missions, and he is named so because of the black marking around his eyes in the shape of a mask. Haji is Johnny's adopted brother and best friend. An adopted orphan from Kolkata, he possesses powers like levitation and hypnotism. Finally, Roger T. Race Bannon is a special agent assigned to protect Johnny as a guard, tutor, and companion. He is an expert in judo with a third degree black belt. Comics historian Daniel Herman wrote about how the look of Johnny Quest was unlike any other cartoon television show of the time. Although there were some outdated views of other cultures such as making the main villain Dr. Zen Asian with yellow skin and giving Haji the power of snake charming, the show was action packed and full of adventure that is enjoyable for both children and adults alike. The jokes are smart and the writing is memorable. The child characters are presented as equal and just as intelligent as the adults. Overall, Johnny Quest is a must watch if you are a fan of action and classic animation. Number 4. Space Ghost This show aired on CBS from September 1966 through September 1967. Each of the 20 episodes ran for 30 minutes and consisted of three segments. Two segments of Space Ghost with one segment of Dino Boy. Space Ghost primarily fights villains in outer space with his sidekicks Jan and Jace, as well as their pet monkey Blip. Jan and Jace are typically kidnapped by one of the Space Ghost's enemies, and Space Ghost saves the day. As you see, I have complete mastery over all animal life on this planet. Villains include the Black Widow and aliens Zorak and Brack, Lokar, Metallus, Moltar, and the Creature King. Dino Boy is an unrelated character. His name is Todd, and he parachuted from a crashing plane, landing in a South American valley. In this valley, dinosaurs, cavemen, and other prehistoric mammals somehow have survived extinction and coexist with the mossmen, rock pygmies, and others. Dino Boy's friends are the caveman Ugg, a woolly mammoth named Tusco, and Ugg's pet Brontosaurus, appropriately named Bronte. Uh, In 1994, Space Ghost was adapted into an adult animated parody talk show on Cartoon Network. The series aired through 1999 and then was revived for late night programming from 2001 to 2004. Titled Space Ghost Coast to Coast, the show inspired two spin offs The Brack Show and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. In 2016, Space Ghost and Dino Boy appeared in the DC comic series Future Quest. The original show has a futuristic feel and is a classic Saturday morning cartoon. The animation style and the cliffhangers make it a near impossible to stop watching. Like other Hanna-Barbera shows, Space Ghost is a series chock full of adventure, something children have sought across the ages. Featuring the talent of Gary Owens, known for his voice acting on shows such as Dinosaurs, Garfield, Sesame Street, and more, this is a show that you do not want to miss. Number 5. Adam Ant we have seen Ant-Man in Marvel before, and if you thought Adam Ant was anything like that, think again. Adam Ant is a superhero ant who operates out of an ant hill in the countryside. Much like other superheroes, he has powers too. Some of these include the ability to fly, super speed and strength, along with invulnerability, all of which are incredibly important. A tiny ant and his atomic powers. 
as what it takes and always makes the violent. His ant hill was his home, and it also consisted of some essentials like a computer and exercise equipment. Well, even a superhero ant needs to get his workout done. He had a good reputation with the police, who were often underfunded and inept, who contacted and relied on him often, and sent him to complete missions and assignments. He even had a catchphrase that he would often use. Up and at him, Adam Ant. Keep your hat on, warden. Adam Ant is up and at him. Some of the missions that Adam Ant undertook were a parody of Batman. This superhero was created by Hanna-Barbera in the year 1965, with a total of 26 episodes, with the show running for exactly one year. However, Cartoon Network and Boomerang aired their reruns in the 1990s and even the 2000s. Adam Ant was originally voiced by Howard Morris, but in the later episodes, Don Messick took over the character. The show was one of the best cartoons of the 60s. It had some good laughs and a great problem-solving Ant. It was popular enough that in the year 2016, the Adam Ant show was made available for download via the iTunes store. Although like many cartoons, this show is for ages 5 and up, even then it can be enjoyed by people of all age groups. Number 6. Birdman The animated series revolves around Birdman, who is Ray Randall, an ordinary man who was given sun-based superpowers by an Egyptian sun god. Birdman also has a trusted sidekick, Avenger, an eagle. Together, they work for a secret government agency headed by the mysterious One-Eyed Falcon 7. Them without harming them. Just like other superheroes, Birdman possesses superhuman strength and the ability to fly with the help of giant wings, which shouldn't be a surprise given his name. He also has enhanced hearing and the ability to create a shield using solar energy. As the series progresses, Birdman is joined by Bird Boy, who is a young boy discovered by Birdman by saving his life using his energy powers. Bird Boy now has metal wings and helps Birdman fight crime. This show is an underrated classic and one can draw comparisons between Birdman and Falcon, the Marvel character who was first introduced in the comics in 1969. We don't know which one he is. Here comes my eagle. He'll show you. Flying winged men with a bird as a pet, along with a one-eyed man who sounds a lot like Nick Fury. Of course, Hanna-Barbera cartoons weren't as popular as Marvel, probably why this often got overlooked despite its fun premise, exciting villains, and engaging plotlines. Birdman truly was Hanna-Barbera's winged wonder. Number 7. Galaxy Trio as the name suggests, the series revolves around three interplanetary law enforcers, Vapor Man, Gravity Girl, and Meteor Man. Their job is essentially to fight criminals and supervillains throughout the cosmos. They spend their time in the cruiser, Condor 1, patrolling space and maintaining order in the name of the Galactic Patrol Law Enforcement Agency. Vapor Man can transform all of his body into gaseous form, much like the others from his home planet, Vaporous. This enables him to fly, escape from physical ties, and squeeze through very small spaces, all of which have proved extremely helpful. Meteor Man, like everyone from his home planet Meteorus, can transform himself into various types of meat. No, actually, he can increase or decrease the size of any part of his body. Oh, and that's how they breathe above water. Who go us there? and gain superhuman strength in that part of the body. Gravity Girl can bend the laws of gravity at her will, allowing her to fly and lift very heavy objects with her mind. This animated science fiction television series was created by Alex Toth and produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions in the year 1967 and ran on Saturday mornings until 1968. The series appeared in reruns on Cartoon Network from 1992 to 2000, after which the series began airing on Cartoon Network's sister channel Boomerang. This show and the trio might remind you a little of Guardians of the Galaxy by Marvel Comics as it is easy to draw parallels between them. Along with a catchy plot, this show prides itself on the music and sound effects which make it easy to engage with. While there were plenty of shows that dealt with problems on Earth, very few reached the cosmos, making it all the more interesting. Number 8. Dino Mutt Dog Wonder This American animated television series was produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions and aired on ABC from the year 1976 to 1977. The plot revolves around a millionaire socialite Radley Crown, voiced by Gary Owens, and his dog Dino Mutt, voiced by Frank Welker. They enjoy their leisure time in the big city until alerted by the Falcon Flash. They then immediately dash to Falcon's lair, where they switch to their secret identities, the Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt, Dog Wonder. The Blue Falcon, who is similar to Batman in many ways, and his assistant Dino Mutt, an effective robot dog who can produce an infinite number of mechanical devices from his body. Well, huh? It's Dino Mutt, Dog Wonder, my hero. They have a Falcon car, which they can use for transportation. Again, a parallel can be drawn between the Falcon car and the Batmobile. 
They often receive a report from secret agent Focus and then proceed to fight crime against wrongdoers. They are fearless and powerful and have one job, to protect their people. Even though parallels were drawn between this show and Batman, it is important to note that they also had a fair share of differences between them. Despite its short run, this show was a favorite to many people as they sat down to watch Dynama and Blue Falcon fight crimes every Saturday morning. The two characters might be very different from each other, but in the most fun and goofy way. They balance each other out, making room for some fun gags and some serious crime-fighting moments. In the simplest possible way, this show is Batman meets Scooby-Doo, and who wouldn't love to see that combination? It's also important to note that Dynamut was originally broadcast as a half-hour segment of the Scooby-Doo Dynamut Hour from the year 1976 to 1977. Number 9. Shazam. The story revolves around siblings Chuck, voiced by Jerry Dexter, and Nancy, voiced by Janet Waldo, who come across a cave off the coast of Maine, where they end up finding a mysterious chest containing halves of a strange ring. They then decide to join these parts together, and end up being transported back to the legendary land of the Arabian Nights, where they meet their genie Shazam, voiced by Barney Phillips. Shazam creates a magical flying camel named Kabubi, who is voiced by Don Messick and serves as their mode of transportation. Along with that, he also gives them plenty of gifts like an invisibility cloak and a magic rope. Shazam tells Chuck and Nancy that he can't return them home until they deliver the two rings to his rightful owner, known as the Wizard of the Seventh Mountain, and thus begins their journey. There's a city down there, Chuck. We'll land outside. We don't want Kabubi attracting too much attention. They have to face many villains throughout, and two of the recurring villains are Master of Thieves and Demon in a Bottle. Created by Alex Toth and produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions in the year 1967, the show aired until 1968. It later continued in reruns until the year 1969. It aired on Saturday mornings on CBS. This show was fairly similar to a few of the other shows created in the late 60s, but the smart use of a genie and two siblings separated from the others. Certainly. She's up to something, Kabubi. Keep out of sight until we need you. This show relied heavily on its music and the sound effects, some of which were created for Johnny Quest. It was an imaginative show full of excitement and action, everything you would want a magical show to look like. It steered away from the usual superhero stuff which was common for Hanna-Barbera, making it a timeless classic. Presenting Frankenstein Jr. at The Impossibles. Number 10, Frankenstein Jr. and The Impossibles. Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles is an animated television series produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions, which premiered in the year 1966 on CBS. The show ran for two seasons on Saturday mornings, which was the regular average of most series back in the 60s. Frankenstein Jr., I'm at the Wax Museum, and I need help! Okay, Buzz! Interestingly enough, this series contained a total of two segments, which served as a middle ground between Hanna-Barbera's traditional early output and its superhero-based late 1960s cartoons, which in simpler terms meant it truly had the best of both worlds. Give him a taste of his own medicine! No! No! Not that! Not the wax go Every episode of this series would feature two segments with the Impossibles and Frankenstein Jr. in between. Frankenstein Jr. takes place in Civic City, where scientist Buzz Conroy and his father, Professor Conroy, fight supervillains with the help of a gallant robot named Frankenstein Jr. This robot was built by Buzz with the help of an energy ring. If you think Frankenstein Jr. looks familiar, you might draw the connection with the anime character Tetsu Jin 28 Go, who is also known as Gigantor. Moving on to the Impossibles, the main characters are a trio of superheroes which consist of Multiman, Fluid Man, and Coil Man, who pose undercover as a rock music band. Their boss of sorts is Big D, who contacts them with information about the assignments which they must complete. This series was one of the cooler ones in the 60s, with guitars having TV monitors, flying cars, and many such things. One of the best things about the series was its music, as the soundtrack itself gained many fans who jammed to their tunes which resembled soft punk from time to time. Even though the show was cancelled in 1968 because of the complaints it received against violence, the Frankenstein Jr. segments of the series were later recycled in the 1976 series Space Ghost and Frankenstein Jr. Number 11, Powerpuff Girls. One of the more famous animated series was produced by Hanna-Barbera for Cartoon Network. The Powerpuff Girls aired on Cartoon Network for a total of six seasons, three specials, and a feature film with the final episode airing on March 25, 2005. A total of 78 episodes were aired on Cartoon Network from the year 1998 to 2005. This series was nominated for several awards, including Primetime Emmy Awards, Annie Awards, and Kids' Choice Awards. 
The premise of the show was incredibly easy and well laid out as it followed the story of three girls in kindergarten, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, who all possess superpowers. Girls, call the police! This crook isn't going to deceive us anymore! Yeah! While these young girls spent their days fighting supervillains and monsters, they also had to worry about problems faced by girls of their age, adding an element of humor and reliability to it. The opening sequence of every episode tells us more about how they were created. Professor Utonium tried to create the perfect little girls with sugar, spice, and everything nice, but accidentally spilled another chemical, which led to the creation of these three girls giving them superpowers such as super speed, super strength, and superhuman senses, x-ray vision, and much more. The three girls were very different from each other. Blossom was the leader, Bubbles was the one filled with joy and laughter, and Buttercup was the tough one. Given the fact that this show had a total of six seasons, along with specials and a film, it is safe to say that it was a huge success and still relevant even today. Powerpuff Girls were created at a time when little girls had to spend all their time looking at boys and men fighting crime, so this truly was a breath of fresh air. The show's main villain Mojo Jojo was also an entertaining addition, and it was truly satisfying watching the girls beat him every time. Number 12, Super Friends. This animated series was produced by Hanna-Barbera and National Periodical Publications and is based on the Justice League comic books. It first aired on ABC in the year 1973, featuring now well-known DC superheroes such as Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman. Apart from these superheroes, the show also included a trio of sidekicks, all brand new and had no connection to the Justice League comic books. These characters were Wendy Harris, Marvin White, and Wonder Dog. Each episode had a similar premise, where the heroes would respond to an emergency detected by their computer located at the headquarters called Hall of Justice. Colonel Wilcox, who was a U.S. Army official, played the role of a reoccurring character in this series and had a close working relationship with the superheroes, which served as a link between them and the government. This show was a little different from the usual superhero shows that were released at that time because it often portrayed natural disasters which were triggered by human and sometimes alien activity. End of the day, it was a superhero show, so it did have the supervillains and enemies, but it was way ahead of its time nonetheless. Super Friends even had guest appearances from Flash, Green Arrow, and Plastic Man. The show was cancelled in a year 1974 after 16 one-hour long episodes with multiple reruns. Anyone who was a comic book fan in the 70s held a special place in their heart for Super Friends. Back in the day, cartoons weren't allowed to depict much violence, so the audience didn't witness the DC-level action we see now. Despite that, Super Friends was goofy, cheesy, entertaining, and the perfect superhero cartoon. It also served as a learning tool for kids who watched the show, but it would be interesting to see a DC cartoon that is as censored in today's day and age. Number 13, Galtar and the Golden Lance. This show aired for 21 episodes from the year 1985 to 1986 and is often thought to have been made in response to the popularity of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Galtar seeks to end the destruction caused by Tormak, the tyrant who killed his parents and assassinated the family of Princess Galita and her brother Zorn. Tormak desires Galtar's golden lance because he has stolen Princess Galita's sacred shield and whoever wields the two together shall be made invincible. As Tormak continues to gain control over the land of Bandazar, Galtar, Golita, and Zorn band together facing trials and tribulations along the way on their quest to stop Tormak and his allies. The animation and storyline appeared to be influenced heavily by other popular media of the time, including Hanna-Barbera's Herculoids and Scooby-Doo, as well as Star Wars and Conan the Barbarian. The series is very late 1980s with its sword and sorcery concept, and even stars Mary McDonnell Lewis, known for voicing Lady J in the show G.I. Joe as Princess Galita. The show is a bit darker than other children's cartoons of the time, with its villain essentially being a mass murderer and the lead character seeking revenge for the deaths of their loved ones. Interestingly, Galtar and Galita seem to start as love interests, but this does not play a major part in the story and is even less important as the story continues. On the whole though, the action and jokes are kid friendly and the pace is quick, making it an easy and enjoyable watch. The power is yours! Number 14, Captain Planet and the Planeteers, The New Adventures of Captain Planet. This is a sequel series to Captain Planet and the Planeteers, which was produced by Turner Program Services and DIC Enterprises on TBS from the year 1990 to 1992. The New Adventures of Captain Planet was produced by Hanna-Barbera Cartoons and distributed by Turner Program Services the year 1993 to 1996. 
This animated series served the purpose of educational entertainment over the years, focusing mainly on the environment and its factors, making it way ahead of its time. Each episode is followed up with a clip where the show discusses how the viewers can contribute and help become a part of the solution instead of the problem. And this is very relevant even today. Gaia, voiced by Whoopi Goldberg from seasons 1 to 3, and Margaret Kidder from seasons 4 to 6, plays the part of the spirit of the planet Earth who sends five magic rings to five chosen youths all around the world. Four of these rings control the elements of nature, and one is the element of the heart. These planeteers are tasked with helping defend the planet from environmental disasters and educate humankind to keep others from happening. They include Quaim from Africa, Wheeler from New York, Linker from the Soviet Union, and in later seasons, from Eastern Europe, G from Asia, and Mati from Brazil. After Hanna-Barbera took over the production, the plot stayed the same. However, it revealed more of the past of each of the characters and expanded on it, along with the tone of these episodes, which is more mature than the initial seasons. More importantly, this entire series played a very important role in trying to make people more aware of the environmental risks. Some of the villains in the show were voiced by popular celebrities, increasing the viewership and hence making people more aware. I'm strong to the finish, but I eat the finish. I'm a fighter sailor man. Number 15, The All-New Popeye Hour. This American animated television series was produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions and King Features Entertainment, starring the lovable comic strip character Popeye. It aired from the year 1978 to 1983, every Saturday morning on CBS. Hanna-Barbera Productions tried its very best to retain the style of the original Thimble Theater comic strip while still managing to comply with the content restrictions on violence. Apart from the popular main characters such as Popeye, Bluto, Olive Oil, and Wimpy, we also see Sweet Pea, Poop Deck Pappy, Eugene the Jeep, and Popeye's quadruplet nephews. In the beginning, this series had a total of three segments which included Popeye, Popeye's Treasure Hunt, and Dinky Dog. And later in 1979, the show added the Popeye Sports Parade. The all-new Popeye Hour ran on CBS until the year 1981 and then shortened to a half-hour show and retitled the Popeye and Olive Comedy Show, and altogether this series had a total of 56 episodes. Hanna-Barbera also produced the Popeye Valentine special Sweethearts at Sea and Popeye and Son. The plot of this series and others revolves around Popeye, who is a sailor man, eats a lot of spinach, and is incredibly strong. He is very different from the usual crime-fighting superheroes that we have seen so far. However, he does possess superhuman strength of some sort which comes from eating spinach. After decades of being in comic strips, the fans were very excited about seeing Popeye on their television screens, and the show did not disappoint. Even though this character has been picked up by several television studios over the year, compromising the continuity of the animation, it still managed to retain its charm every single time. Even today, children are encouraged to eat more spinach because that's what made Popeye so strong. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.